Welcome back fellow readers, this is Suave and today we're going to be doing our first light novel review. Today we're going to be taking a look at The Bloodline, written by Takatero Tsunamori, illustrated by Hakuz, and art direction by Tatsuya Kitabayashi. First let's look at the synopsis and then we'll talk about the book. After the fall of civilization, a hierarchical society was born where blood determines everything. The rich steal both the blood and lifespans of the poor rejoicing in their eternal lives. Nagi is a commoner doomed to an early death, while Saya is a royal gifted with eternal youth. When their unlikely paths cross in a twist of fate, their innocent love sets the gears in motion to tear down the walls of society built upon tremendous inequality and discrimination. This world is filled with action, fantasy, and romance. And this world is sort of isolated in their own way. It's kind of they're walled away from the rest of the world. They have their own little society. It kind of reminds me of Attack on Titan, except instead of walls, uh, this whole country is surrounded by mountains. And so there's really no way for anyone to get in or outside of this country. So they're kind of in their own little uh, corner of the world, minding their own business. And as you heard earlier, we have this great divide between poor common folk on one side and rich nobles on the other side. But this story is not as simple as rich versus poor. We're gonna get to that later on in the video. Now our story starts off with our main character Nagi. Now Nagi's already in a really bad situation. He's supposed to be looking for a treasure that he was told he could find at this mansion. There's not gonna be any guards there to stop him, but it turns out there is a guard there. And it, it's troubling because this guard is of noble descent. And in this world, you have to understand that nobles are superior to common folk in both strength and speed. So this noble has an upper hand on Nagi, but Nagi has a few surprises of his own. Now Nagi, he's able to momentarily gain the upper hand on this noble. He's able to tackle him down and they go crashing down through a glass ceiling that leads into a different room. And what they find is, or what he finds, is that there was a young girl there strapped in a chair. She has these needles pricked all over her arms. Uh, he can see these tubes that are being uh, filled with blood flowing out of her or through her. And he immediately thinks that something is horribly wrong. He has to go help her. They're gonna be, they're doing blood offering with her blood. She's just a regular commoner. We have to get her out of here. And so he tries to help her out, but while he's distracted with that, the guard is still there. And the guard gets to jump on Nagi, and he has Nagi dead to rights. He is beating him down. Nagi's weapon has been thrown to the side. And this girl, she, she kind of understands what's happening directly in front of her, but she doesn't really understand why these people are here or who they really are. And so she sees this happening, she's telling them to stop, and right before the guard is able to pretty much kill Nagi, uh, she gets up out of the chair, the needles start coming out of her arms, uh, blood is, splay is spraying all over the room, and she tries to grab this guard, and what we're told is that as soon as she comes into contact with this guard, or as soon as some of her blood comes into contact with this guard, I should say, he immediately falls flat and dead. And we don't, re or at least the characters don't really understand why this has happened, but they just know that this is their opportunity to leave, and so they get right out of there. And that is how we get introduced to our two main characters of this story. Now, this book is interesting because we, Remember how I said we have two main characters, uh, Nagi and Saya. Saya is the name of the girl that he just rescued. So what happens in the story is, at first you're led to believe that Nagi is our main character. He's gonna do whatever it takes to protect her. You know, there's gonna be bad things happening to her. She's gonna be sent off somewhere. He's gonna go try to rescue her. We're gonna see his adventures. But actually, it kind of goes half and half. We see what Nagi does and during his perspective throughout the story, but we also see what Saya does on her side of the story. You see the aftermath of what happens in that mansion is what leads to Noble searching for Saya. And when that happens, that's when our story branches off into two paths. 
we get Saya's perspective and we get Nagi's perspective. Now, it's not like the story is mainly following Nagi and we get a few sprinkles of Saya. We get just as many pages for Saya as we do with Nagi. And then we get to Saya and what we learn through her is that the nobles aren't as simple as just nobles. There's a whole lot of different levels between uh, lower nobles, middle nobles, high nobles. There's these different factions in between these nobles. Some of these nobles don't like each other. Some are more traditionalist, some are more modernist. And then, as we said earlier, Saya is a royalty of, with eternal youth. And so Saya is a big deal in this noble community. There's a lot of nobles going gaga over Saya after she arrives and they find out who she is. But not everybody is very excited to see Saya. And that's when we get introduced to this complicated political intrigue that's happening in the shadows of the society. And that is what's really making this story interesting. You see, Saya is sort of like the reader in this book. She is not aware of what is going on, why these people act this way, who these people are. And so she's learning about this society at the same time that we're learning about this society. And it's interesting because she gets paired up with a personal guard of hers, Jubilia. And I gotta feel sorry for Jubilia. You meet Jubilia very early on in a different uh, scenario, but when she's paired up with Saya, she's her, she is appointed as her personal guard. And she is told that she needs to be able to give whatever Saya wants. And that's uh, not just including protecting Saya. And so Saya, takes this into mind and she starts asking Jabila these really hard questions like who are these people why are they acting this way why is the law like this and as the reader we're like yeah yeah we really want to know what this is all about and Jubilee is like no no no, no Saya you can't be asking these types of questions this is way too rude to be asking so bluntly like this there's no way I can be giving you all this info and she's like well I'm I'm royalty and they said you have to give me whatever I want and so Jabilia, she's very, she's very loyal to her superior. So she goes by that word and she starts feeding her this info. And that's when uh, Saya starts to become smarter and smarter about the reality of the situation that she's in and the society that we're all living in. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to take anything away from Nagi. When you read Nagi's side of the story, you get a nice, healthy mixture of action, adventure, and fantasy. Uh, Nagi is the one who's trying to figure out his place in life, where he fits in. He's trying to figure out a way to take down the nobles, maybe work with a rebellious group. But when you start reading side side and you start getting into all these nice little details and figuring out all the answers, and you start to figure out a few little secrets, it cuts off and you get straight to Nagi. And inside you just kind of want to scream like, No, I don't want to go to Nagi yet. Bring me back to Saya. Now remember, the title of this book is The Bloodline, and that's exactly what this story and this world is all about. If you're born into noble blood, you're pretty much set for life. You're gonna be living a very happy, healthy life. Uh, your family is gonna be living eternally. You're gonna be sucking the blood out of these common folk. And if you're born into the common folk, you're sort of already um, put your mindset into the fact that your blood is being transfer it over to the noble so that they can live an eternal life while your lifespan is probably 45 at best probably in your early 30s you're already considered elderly and you're already at the last stages of your life so yeah this is a pretty messed up society you have these nobles who easily overpower these common folk the common folk have no other choice but to abide by these rules and this is just how society has lived over generations and generations. So they're kind of used to it. But Saya and Nagi, they don't like this system and they are determined to change it together. Now I had a blast reading through this book, but I'm not gonna lie, the first part of the book was kind of a slugfest, but when you get past that part and you start learning about all these different factions, relationships, political gain, that's when the story really starts to now, if those elements interest you, then this is the book that you definitely want to pick up. Don't get me wrong, the action is amazing in this book. There's a secret that I don't want to give away with each noble and the way they fight and the way that you have to take them down. And when you learn about that secret, then the fights start to become less straightforward 
and more strategic on how you go about fighting these nobles. In fact, the only negative thing I have to say about this book is the lack of illustrations. There's really only one illustration inside of this book and it's all the way near the beginning. After that, it's up to your imagination, which isn't really a bad thing, but it would just be nice to see maybe a map of the region, maybe a hierarchy table of all these different factions and relationships, or even just some simple illustrations of what some of these characters look like. Now this is just volume one of the Bloodline, and I think volume two is coming out in January, so I'm very much looking forward to volume two and seeing what that brings to the story. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. Let me know what you think of the Bloodline, and if you like my content, hit that like and subscribe at the bottom. We're going to be talking about more light novels and manga in the near future, and I hope to see you all soon. Bye, everybody.